Hey everyone, Thyrum here. As you may have guessed from the title, the Slormancer is on track for yet another update to their beautiful game. The duo dev team keeps grinding it out, spoiling us with more content and today I wanted to make a video for two reasons. One, because of all the ARPG releases going on, whether it's 0.9.1 in Last Epoch, May 25th, or Diablo 4, start of June, or Torchlight Infinite 1.0 release in two days, or ExileCon, it can be overwhelming almost, and I thought maybe you have forgotten about the Slormancer. So this is a reminder. Super fun game. Not sponsored by the way. 2. Because of the latest Slormite Chronicles, their dev update, highlighting some upcoming changes which I would like to cover. The next update will be the Royal Wing update, part 2. There's no release date yet, but part 1 is already live. We're getting Act 5, new boss fights, new ancestral skills and an increased level cap. And to some extent this wraps up the story, barring the finale which will be playing out in two additional endgame modes. I wonder if we'll get something like that in Volson, which ultimately with Act 4 created a similar structure where the conclusion of the narrative is the endgame. That is for later. For now, the post dives into a new feature for the game, loadouts. The way it works is that you can take a snapshot of your current build, switch to another build that you've been looking to try out, and load back your previous build once you're done. The whole idea here is to incentivize players to try out different builds, and because the Slormancer has so many wacky combinations and weapons, this will be a great feature to have. You'll get a wardrobe, you can have up to 5 different sets and gear will indicate which loadout set it is a part of. Seems like solid design and I can't wait to try this out. Then the devs are teasing a bit about upcoming changes, in particular to legendary equipment scaling, soul eating mantle runes such as a thornbite rune and activation rune of Hagan, and silence in general. If you're running a build using any of these you might be in for a bit of a surprise. Another surprise, although this is a pleasant one, is the upcoming change to armor and elemental resistances. The devs are doing a great job explaining why these stats currently suck and the long and short of it is armor and alley res only work against very small hits because its calculation is based on damage. And because sometimes monsters do more than 100 times the damage compared to lower rev levels, ultimately the mitigation is negligible. So what the devs changed is that armor and alley res now scales with level and wrath and that also means that the damage that's mitigated is roughly the same percentage regardless of what wrath level you play. And that means in turn that armor and alley res will be completely broken most likely as soon as this gets implemented because it starts acting like a less damage taken multiplier across the board if I read this correctly. It never falls off again so start collecting these affixes on gear because this is gonna be wild. Next topic, the Great Forge. Ladies and gentlemen, I've not really made much content about Slormancer, but I have farmed a lot of it on the Great Forge on my Steam Deck. It is a blast, the first three times. But after that, doing 100 waves arena mode style is like any other 100 wave arena mode style, and that means it's pretty boring and it takes a while. The solution the devs are providing to make it faster is to give players an option to speed up the forge by a modifier. So instead of something like enemies drop 30% more gold, you skip 10 waves. You would also skip 10 waves of potential god tier rewards or so and I think that is the main drawback of this system, which is that players still feel they're leaving loot on the table and in an ARPG that's not great. So yeah, on paper this solves the issue, but the negative connotations the Forge imposes on players won't disappear I think, because you're still going to be either bored because you don't want to skip loot and thus play 100 waves, or you reach the end sooner but you feel bad because you may have skipped a bunch of loot as well. I feel the easier solution would just be to have the whole thing stop at 50 waves instead of 100. Maybe scale everything up a little bit including rewards and that just makes for a snappier game mode. It is simply too long, also for what sort of game the Slormancer is. I feel the Slormancer shines for a quick few sessions and many game modes are like that. Only the Forge deviates a lot here, making it less appealing to run and stand out a little bit, but not in a good way. And finally, for the new players, they're trying to address two issues. First, the sort of setback you feel when equipping a newly found Slorm Reaper. All new Slorm Reapers you find are level 1 and because damage scaling in general comes from your Slorm Reaper, you don't want to swap to a level 1 Slorm Reaper that you just found just to try it out. 
To remedy that, the devs are adding an item that instantly levels up a Slorm Reaper to your current level, although there will be a limit to this. It's a good change. The second issue we've all experienced is early game sustain, the lack of it mostly. Unless you find a leech or health regen item, you are pretty much screwed, let's be honest. And new players don't even know those items exist, so they just keep struggling to stay healthy. For these situations, the devs are thinking about an item that acts as a potion and works throughout the act, but stops working in early Wrath Endgame, as it is assumed you have leech and health regen at that point. Also, they're thinking about dropping health gloves from monsters, Bolson style, which should work as well. There's no release date yet for the new update, but they did the classic GGG announcement of the announcement, taking a page out of that book, because June 6th there will be another dev update, and then they will announce the release of the Royal Wing update part 2. Hopefully it's going to fit in some of your schedules. That's all really, I'm going back to last epoch making more builds. You should do the same, patch 0.9 is pretty good after all. For more ARPG news, please subscribe, like the video and all that's left to say is thanks for watching. See you soon, love you all, bye bye.